no matter the location. From OAKLA to LV, I'm a Raider. Today's show is presented by Only One Nation. If you're looking for the best Raiders gear out there, go to OnlyOneNation60.com and use code FCOVID to be able to get a free mask when you purchase a hat, a t-shirt, or a tank top. So now we're going to get into some Q&As here or some questions that were brought up on our live show on Tuesday. First Super Chat, though, is coming in here from Logan232. We can't sign Jalen if we sign Clowney. Uh, it's actually not 100% true because if we sign Clowney to a one-year deal, which I think is what would happen, you could have some extra money then next season for Jalen. So the next question is also a super chat from Logan. Appreciate you. We need Clowney so when the O-line doubles or triples Crosby, uh, triples him, Crosby can get to the quarterback. Is edge rusher probably still our biggest need on defense? I would say possibly. But do we absolutely need Clowney? The hope is no, because if Cleland and Carl can step up, then you don't need Clowney. Does Clowney help? Yes, absolutely. I think if you can get him for a one year, at this point, 13, 14, 15 million dollar deal, that's something that I would probably pull the trigger on for Clowney. But the fact that nobody's offered him that makes me still think that he wants a little bit more. Another super chat from Nick. What up, Nick? What do you think about Derek Carr? I think Derek Carr is a good quarterback. I think Derek Carr, honestly, is maybe a little bit of a, an above-average quarterback. However, I don't think that he's elite, and I don't know if he really has the talent to fully be able to take us to that next step if you don't put a lot of pieces around him. He's not a type of Patrick Mahomes. But right now, we do have a solid team. We do. It's just he needs an offensive line. He needs solid wide receivers. He needs solid tight ends. And he needs a solid running game to be good. To me, that isn't an elite quarterback, and he's not a top 10. But I do like Derek, and I do have confidence because we have a very good team. So that's what I think about Derek Carr. So Nick, appreciate the super chat. So where would y'all rank Derek Carr in terms of quarterbacks, okay? Think about all the starting 32 quarterbacks. Where would you rank DC? For me, he's top 15. He's probably in that range between 12 to 15. I can't put him any uh, anywhere above that. There's just a lot of very talented quarterbacks right now. And so it's nothing against him. Somebody said top 20. Yeah, I think he's top 20. Yes, I think he's top 15. Jeff Rogers says 13. I think that's a pretty good bet. So if you want a question on the show, we had so many Super Chats. Probably the only chance you have of getting on the show at this point is uh, is by using that Super Chat. Somebody said, Mitch, you're a hater from Vic Sacramento. If if me being a hater on Derek is saying that he's you know number 12, 13, 14, I'm just going to be a realist. And I thought that's what Raider fans want, you know, reality. Rugs over under 1,010. I have him at 750 and seven touchdowns. I'll take the under on both of those. I think Henry Ruggs is going to be able to contribute to this team very well, but uh, I'm going to take the under on yards. So I actually think your projection, though, Nathan, is a really, really good one. Dave Wilson, another super chat. You're up here on the Raiders Report. Got 736 people watching. If you could, let's keep liking this video. Maybe we can get to 700 likes. I'd appreciate that. Name a young position coach. You would like to see on the Raiders a young position coach. Well, unfortunately, I haven't really done my homework on position coaches. Um, how about this? How about this? If there's one position coach that I would absolutely love to see on the Raiders, it's Charles Woodson. He's been visiting the facility. Y'all been for a long, long time saying, hey, why not bring him in as the DV coach? Is he consider a young position coach? Probably, right, in terms of coaches' years. So if we could bring in Woodson to be the DV coach, I'd be absolutely all for it. Let's go to T space R, which I believe is a Fox logo. I believe that's what that is. Do you think Abram, so Jonathan Abram, will help the team this year, or will he blow himself up again? Well, do I think he's going to help? Yes. Is he going to be able to stay healthy? That's the real question here. So if you remember last year in Hard Knocks, John would get mad at Abram for playing too hard. Like he wanted to hit people. He wanted to tackle people. He gives it his all, which I absolutely love and I respect. However, he does need to stay healthy this year. And last year, the shoulder injury was a little bit freakish. And from all the reports that I've seen from players that I've talked to, he's 100% healthy. He's ready to rock and roll. And I do think he's going to be able to help out this team a lot. Very versatile. Interested to see if he plays, you know, just, the, I guess, a little bit of cover one, which is something that the Raiders are going to try to do this year. Abram, though, needs to get better in terms of coverage. I know he can tackle. I know he can blitz. He needs to be a better coverage safety, though, for him to really take that next step. 
Kenny, I think you super chat on every show, and I just want you to know, man, that I appreciate you. Cleveland Furl isn't a bust. He had four and a half sacks like Mac his rookie season. Also, trade Gabe Jackson for Yannick Ngakwe. So, Gabe Jackson for Yannick Ngakwe, that'll never happen. Uh, not really close. And then Furl isn't a bust. I agree. You can't put somebody as a bust in their first year, and it's a great point. Mac had only four and a half sacks, and I'll say, you know, that they uh, they don't really play totally different positions. They're both trying to get after the edge. But Khalil Mack and Cleveland Furl are not quite the same player. Um, a lot more explosion out of Khalil Mack than, than Cleveland. But it was a little bit of a reach, in my opinion, when they did take him. But I'm still not going to consider him a bust quite yet. But if he doesn't start performing and start putting up better numbers, then sure, maybe you could throw him in that bust category. But fingers crossed that that never happens. So when I started today's show, I was about like 300 subscribers short of 50K. And I'm hoping by the time that y'all watch this uh, a little bit later in the week, if you're not watching this live, I'm already at 50,000 subscribers. So I don't know what we're going to do yet. We try to celebrate uh, doing crazy stuff here on the Raiders Report when we hit landmarks. So when I hit 10K, we did a jersey giveaway. When I hit 20K subscribers, we gave away Monday Night Football tickets. 30K, we did Edward's Scissor Hands, which is basically like me chugging beer. 40K, we did a, a giveaway as well. I believe it was a jersey giveaway. And then um, for 50K, though, not 100% sure what we're going to do. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button. I would definitely appreciate that. Let's go to Henry Hernandez. And Henry, I need you to go get a picture. So everyone right now, okay, everyone watching the show right now, I want you to start typing get a picture because I think we could all agree that he needs to get it. So should we sign Kendall Beckwith? So Kendall Beckwith. I'm going to be honest with you. Kendall Beckwith, he's a linebacker for, uh, he looks like he played for the Buccaneers last year. Tom, chill the hell out. Should we sign Kendall Beckwith? So it's a good question. I appreciate the super. And uh, last season, I'm going to look up some stats here because honestly, I don't know too much about him. So uh, let's look up some numbers here from Beckwith that he had last year. So 73 tackles in 2017, but uh, 6'2", 243 pounds. Played at LSU, two years of experience. How about this? I'll get some more information on him. You guys can hit me up on IG. And uh, Henry, sorry I don't have too much information on him. Let's go to David. David, I think, has put this super chat in for about, I don't know, four straight weeks. FAB. You all know that I love the FAB, so if you guys want to start chanting FAB, please do so. I would definitely appreciate that. And here we're at 677 likes, so... FABs always appreciated. Also, the super chats as well are always, always appreciated. So, continue to use hashtag Raiders, or you guys can super chat to get on the show. So, since we had so many super chats that came in earlier, and that's basically all the questions that we've been answering. So, if you do have a question, if you want to get on the show, please go ahead and use um, uh, hashtag, you know, Raiders. So. Also a note, we'll give it back to the Beckwith. So he was waived today by the Buccaneers, and he hasn't played since his ankle injury, since it was a car wreck in the 2018 offseason. So that's a little bit of an update on him. But anytime, I know y'all want some extra linebackers. Uh, the issue is I don't know if he's 100% healthy. And with Markel Lee going on the pup list, I have a lot of confidence in Tanner Mew. So, all right, King Higgins, you're up here. Use hashtag Raiders. Should the Raiders go after Trey Lance if Carr struggles? So. Get ready for the uh, the draft rumors already. And earlier today, Tom was talking about doing a 2021 mock draft where we do a lot of them. And I know y'all got mad at Tom the first time he put out a 2021 mock where he did have Trey Lance going to the Raiders early on. If Carr struggles, yeah, you got to look to move on. The issue is, though, realistically, John Gruden has never, never drafted a quarterback in round one. He's always kind of relied on veterans. Can you look at Trey Lance? Sure. But it, why not, why not, if you're building a team that's supposed to win now, why not maybe go out and trade for a guy like Aaron Rodgers, who, who I think you could get as a pretty good discounted deal. If you go out and trade for Rodgers next year, three years, $73 million. It's about $22 million a year because of the money that the Packers would have to eat if they trade him. So if you ask me right now, Aaron Rodgers, yeah, I'd, I'd, rather, trade, or I'd rather take him than Trey Lance, who I do like, quarterback out of North Dakota State, 28 touchdowns, zero interceptions last year so if you guys haven't noticed by now i am wearing an only one nation t-shirt absolutely love the shirts that you're going to be able to get from them by going to onlyonenation 60.com you can get a hat a tank a t-shirt but wait 
the special deal. Use code FCOVID at checkout and you're going to be able to get a hat or you're going to be able to get a free face mask with purchase of a hat, a t-shirt, or a tank top. I have the shirt, I have the tank top, and I have the face mask, all of which I wear probably weekly. The face mask I wear just about every single day into work. The only though, I'll be honest with you, I didn't wear it today because it's in the washer and luckily they are machine washable. So you'll see it in the comments. It's in the description. OnlyOneNation60.com. Use code FCOVID. All right, Logan, you're up here, man. Appreciate the super chat. Got 813 people watching now. What if we get Jalen Hurts next year if the Eagles don't want him no more? So I'm good on Jalen Hurts. I never wanted Jalen Hurts. I don't believe that he's uh, very good. I know some people are throwing out videos of him throwing wounded ducks because he can't throw a spiral, apparently. He was a good college quarterback, and I think he's going to be a good football player. Jalen Hurts, to me, though, is going to be the next Taysom Hill, where good football player, maybe a lot like a Tim, Tim Tebow, if you will, he's just never going to be an NFL quarterback. Not quick enough decision maker. I don't think he has the awareness. So for me, I'm going to respectfully pass on Jalen Hurts. So if you guys haven't already, please let me know where you're watching from right now. I'm watching from Dallas. Uh, for anyone that knows, I grew up in Danville, Pennsylvania. Shout out to the 570. So where, okay? Where are y'all watching from right now? I see Angel Vasquez says 530. Ian says 518. 805, 626 to 707 from Michael Meyer. Bud Razor is going to go with 610. And then we got another one coming in from 706 from Kevin Robbins, 115. Vincent DeCampos, get a pick. Best stadium in the NFL. So as much as I want to say the Raiders, until I see the Raiders stadium, I can't say it's the best in the NFL. And until there's a game there, I can't say it's the best in the NFL. So do I think it looks the best right now? Yes, I definitely do. I would say out of the stadiums that I've been to, the loudest one, honestly, is has been the Coliseum. Uh, I used to work for the Jets in college. That East Rutherford, uh, MetLife is a pretty cool stadium. Carolina Panthers was actually the very first stadium I ever saw as a seven-year-old. Dallas Cowboys Stadium, it is really big. It's pretty nice as well, the big screen. But, uh, I mean, in terms of the one that looks the best right now, sure, let's go with the Raiders. What up, Daniel? You're up, brother. Aaron Rodgers, 2021. So, I've made a lot of Aaron Rodgers videos out there. If you guys are curious of what it would cost, what a trade would look like, any Aaron Rodgers scenario going to the Raiders in 2021, all you got to do is this. Look up Aaron Rodgers, Raiders on YouTube. I guarantee you the Raiders report, the video, we're going to be the very, very first people that end up showing up. Raider Nation, what's going on? Is this the number one Raiders channel on YouTube? For Chucky Heads, believe it, baby. And if you haven't already, subscribe right here. I'm giving you Chucky Heads news, rumors, Raider Nation rumors. And look at this. I'm making your life easier. Check out my next video. Thanks for watching, and go Raiders.